I'm so happy to have Emmy Award winning, I should say multiple, Emmy Award winning director Joseph Rosendo on the line. He's just an amazing man who has, um, we followed his journey through the COVID days and his many efforts to get to France, uh, I think a three or four times postponed trip. Uh, but yeah, six times six, postponed. <laughs> but you finally yeah. made it, and I can't wait to talk to you. As you all know, Joseph Rosendo's got Travel Scope, and it's a wonderful, wonderful show, a website, also a magazine that you can get online. And, and uh, I think it's six Emmys you've gotten, right? Six, yes. We have the show, uh, Travel, Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope on PBS, and... Uh, and Amazon and uh, Create TV. Yes, we were at six shows. And 18, six Emmys, yes. 18 time Emmy nominee, 42 Telly Awards. Right. And, and I, I think I read that you were the mayor of uh, Topanga at one time. Uh, <laughs> Some people uh, say that. My wife seems to think I'm Mr. Topanga, <laughs> she says. <sighs> Not very happily because she's. Uh, thinks I spend too much time doing it instead of being Mr. Travelscope. So, uh, <laughs> but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm, uh, I'm moved and, uh, to, uh, try and make a difference in the world, including my, my little world here in Topanga. And, uh, it's just something that's always kind of driven me and, uh, you know, um, there are prices I've paid for that and sacrifices I've made, <laughs> But that's the way it's got it's got to be when that's the way it is, you know? What are you going to do? I know. I have a soft spot in my heart for Topanga. I lived there for years, and I, I miss it. It's one of the few places when I go back to L.A. that I visit just to make sure it's maintained um, its atmosphere, and it seems to have done pretty well with that. Um, and Yeah, because we work night and day to make it happen, yes. And yeah. we have a, a core group of people who have, some of them have been here for 30, 40 years, and other them are, others are brand new, and they get it. They know what uh, nature is about, and they know what it takes to protect and preserve a uh, natural environment, and they're willing to make the sacrifices and spend the time for free as volunteers, m- majority, everybody, really, in Topanga, uh, to, uh, to, to do what needs to be done to keep things, uh, keep Topanga Topanga, as they say. We have a slogan that says, don't change Topanga, let Topanga change you. Right. And uh, so that that's, you know, what we think, that's kind of what I'm uh, thinking about when we talk about travel and stuff, you know. Uh, uh-huh. Don't try and, don't change travel, let travel change you, you know. Yeah. Don't, don't, uh, don't ask for uh, the, uh, you know, only luxurious travel and easy travel. Go out there and let the travel and the travel experience and the, the trials and tribulations and the craziness sometimes of travel. Uh, change you, make you a different person. And I love that. Different cultures that we meet and spend time on. It's you know, it's 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 a mission, Cindy. What can I say? It is, and and you you share it. Also, I do want to mention your wonderful book that I got, which is uh, which is out as well, which shares your Thank philosophy you. and and your um, interesting observations over the years. And I know that one took you about a year and a half to get out, I believe, right? I remember talking to you for a while about well, it. Well, I started. You know, I mean, this is something I've been working on for. Well, you know, forever, because uh, it's a collection of stories that I wrote for the Travelscope magazine where people can get for free by going to Travelscope.net. They can download it there, and we have great information and tips and stories and all sorts of great stuff. But it was once printed and in a, in a, in a, in a newsletter-like format, but, you know, a 20-page newsletter, big newsletter, or 20 five i think we had it finally and uh um and so i wrote so i had a column called musings and i wrote stories for it and it started off just being a travel tip column and then it became a travel destination column and then it became uh, my destination column meaning uh stories from my life my past life and uh, and, and 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 things that were happening right then uh counters i was having and then you know stories about my family, and, and basically what, what made me Joseph Rosendo travel writer and, uh, and then travel radio uh, host and then travel television host, director, and writer. So, you know, what, what, how, did, how did that come about? So that's, that's in the book. It's easy to read, short stories, and most of them are kind of fun, a lot of humor in them, I think. Uh, and so um, we are hoping that people will 
buy it and and, and enjoy it. And if they don't enjoy it, uh, you know, um, I, I guess it, I, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it goes. <laughs> it's, it's very enjoyable. And over the last year and a half, I know you did make it to uh, up to Monterey and not Monterey. Actually, it was Big Sur. Oh, I'm getting it all mixed up. It's Fort Mendocino, Bragg, Mendocino, Fort Mendocino, Mendocino, and Fort Bragg. Yes, and and uh, two, yeah, we two. got up there in Mendocino, that Fort Bragg area, the Mendocino County area, yep. and yep. that was one of the first trips during COVID that we managed to squeak out. And we've done a couple of trips up to uh, California wine country, San Inez, right here nearby, about uh, about three hours, three and a half hours north of three hours north of Los Angeles, and then uh, we were able to. Um, to double down on that when we went to Costa Rica in April, and that was really a wonderful trip. And then finally, uh, in the end of July, we got to go to France. And, and you know, all of that is uh, part and parcel of the life we've lived, and it was great to be able to travel again and to feel somewhat normal. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a great, uh, it's a great story. You know, it's a great, great, um, it's our <laughs> it's our it's our life and that we've uh, we've had for 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 a long time. My wife and I have uh, we celebrated our 13th anniversary when we were in France. Oh, wonderful! And, uh, and so we basically you know, known each other for How a couple nice. of years before that. So probably 15, 16 years. And uh, you know we're still um, we're still we're getting ready to go and shoot tomorrow to South Padre Island. Uh, Texas, and uh, and you know, hoping to create something memorable there. Even though some people might think, well, gosh, you know, you've been to Bhutan, you've been to Rwanda, you've been to France, you've been to uh, you know Papua New Guinea, and you're going to South Padre Island. How can that equal? Well, you know, uh, every place has got something to offer because it's got people, and uh, people are what makes the world go round. And uh, if you can connect with them and get them to tell their stories, then uh, then it's uh, it's really um, uh, can be a, an extremely interesting and um, in, insightful program. So that's that's uh, we're hoping for the best, and uh, we always go with an open heart and open mind and uh, and prepared to um, to meet people and and to tell their stories. So that's what we're going to do. Starting tomorrow, we're going for a week. You're, you're a wonderful people person. Well, let's go into your France journey because I've been following you and what you had to go through for it, which is, is quite amazing, actually. What you had to go with your cancellations now, you said six times, um, but sure, pers- yeah. perseverance furthers, and you finally made it. However, you were going to make it as a segment that we were going to televise, but I guess that yeah, couldn't, didn't couldn't, work out. Now we were working with the people from La Boat, who are the people that we've done. Uh, we did a show in, in the Rio, on the Rideau Canal in um, in Canada with, and it was one of our shows of last season, and a, a very good show. And uh, the La Boat people, they put you on a boat, uh, you rent a boat from them, and then you pilot it yourself. And they they do uh, well, they do canals and they do uh, in and they do riverways in Canada now and all throughout mm-hmm. Europe, uh, you know, Belgium, England, Great Britain, even Great Britain. No longer Europe, uh, but uh, France, uh, in Netherlands, and you particularly France. It's called Le Boat because it's based is based in um, it's based in France, and uh, and they have uh, a lot of different canals you can get on the mini uh, mini uh, canal down in the in the south, uh, with uh, which empties out in Bizier down on the French Riviera, and then there's we took. Uh, uh, a, a cruise on the Saone uh, River, and uh, we ended up, and then we took the Canal Central into uh, Burgundy on this trip it's with them. But but we were going to recreate our our uh, trip on the Lot River, which is up in the, um, the near the Dodogne River, uh, up in uh, the north part of the of the southwest of France, and uh, we were going to do that, but. Um, uh, they, we just think, you know, with all the COVID things and restrictions and everything, we weren't able to get it together. So we didn't do that. We ended up going on to, to Burgundy for our own enjoyment. And very interesting um, uh, river trip as opposed to the one on the lot and the one that we had taken in Canada. Uh, it was huge, uh, mostly automatic uh, operated locks that we took. 
And uh, we were able, because, because it's on the Sound River, which is the river that ends up in the Rhone. And um, so we did part of that, and then we we went into um, and, uh, off of the canal and, and got to visit the small villages of Burgundy. And that was really Burgundy's wine, Pinot Noir, is one of my favorite wines in the world. And so it was really a pleasure to learn a little bit about that country from uh, from from the river. What is different? What's the difference between taking the boat versus taking a uh, river cruise? Oh, lots of difference. You know, the boat, you pilot yourself. Oh. That means you get to go through the locks and everything yourself. Wow. And you manage the uh, getting it through. And, and in on the lot river, all the locks are manually operated. So you close them, open them. Wow. Close them, open them <laughs> oh, wow. yourself. Wow. And uh, so it's quite an experience. And, you know, you navigate. Uh, Julie was the captain of the ship, <laughs> and I was the crew. And she was, uh, you know, so so that's basically what that, that that is about. And they have a they have a, you know, a kitchen on board, very nice uh, beds. Uh, they can, some of them can sleep up to six people. They have uh, bathrooms and uh, you know barbecue grill outside and uh, a refrigerator, everything you need to uh, to be on the river and and to live on the river. And uh, so that's that's what that's about. And then a river cruise, of course, is a larger vessel, uh, and um, and so it travels only on certain rivers because it has to be large enough to carry seventy five, one hundred passengers, maybe one hundred fifty. And um, and luxury experience, very nice cabins, staterooms, uh, balconies, uh, all, all meals included normally, and even alcohol in some cases. And and tours and everything that you can get. So it's a it's a it's like a you know it's like taking a cruise ship across yep. the out in the ocean, except yeah. in a river. It's I like it a lot better because it's smaller and it's more intimate. And you know the towns you pass along the way, the towns you stop at, you uh, get to have lots of wonderful experiences. You really get to know an area really well. We did uh, we've done several of those. We did them on the um, Mekong River. Uh, in uh, Cambodia and Vietnam, and uh, also in in Myanmar, uh, on the Irrawaddy River. Uh, we also did them in France on the Rhone, and in on and in Bur- and in the Bordeaux region. And we did a two in that started in Hungary and did the Danube. One started in Hungary, went south to uh, Romania, and the other one uh, started in Hungary and went north to Nuremberg. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was just the ones we did with a company called Scenic and Emerald. And uh, But there are a lot, a number of river cruises. Some of them are based in Europe and smaller and not, you know, not, not as luxurious, but more reasonably priced. And then you get the big uh, luxurious uh, cruisers like... Uh, like scenic and emerald, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know different kinds of people come on board. Depends on the ship. Depends on the cost. Depends on where they're going. So it's a wonderful way to take your hotel with you mm-hmm. and to uh, have a, a fabulous experience and a very luxury experience. And we're just so thankful and grateful that we've had the opportunity to do that in our lives here. So I mean, I have to say, it would seem to be a little daunting to be piloting and captaining, running your own ship? Did, did she have to get a captain's license? Do you get through any testing? No, or, no. How do you, you don't I, need a captain's license. You can, to uh, to do this, you know, um, you we, you know they give you a briefing, and it really <laughs> is you, uh, they basically put you in boat and they say take, take off. <laughs> uh, the briefing is pretty uh, uh, scant. And, um, you know, you get you a book, and as a map, we have books that show you the river and where the shallows are and where it's the safe place oh to go, gosh. the channels are. And, uh, no, Julie uh, did uh, the boat, uh, uh, piloted both of them, the one on the Lot River and the one uh, in, in the Sone and in the Canal Central. And, uh, you know, was an uh, expert captain. And much better captain than I was a crew, and uh, just really uh, managed the boat. She has she has a little history. She from being from Oregon, she had some uh, boating river experience, and so she uh, so she was she took to it really well. And um, and so uh, yeah, yes, everybody. I, I, anybody can do it. 
Anybody really? can do it. Really? really? It's like driving. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 you're going very, very slow. Uh-huh. You're going about 10, mile, 10 miles an hour, maybe wow. it's less. And that's why a, a trip that if uh, a, a part of a river that if you were just go to visit those those uh, towns by car, you could probably do it in an hour. It takes five days because wow. you're just rolling, you're just floating down the river, basically, and you stop at different places. And she was great when it came to parking and backing up and wow. getting it in there. And uh, and I was, like I say, I was the crew. I was running. I was putting the water in the, uh. and, and adding uh, water and you know making sure we were plugged in so we had electricity. And in some places, you stop even though uh, just on the side of the of the river, and you don't worry about you know uh, having those facilities. They and they tell you where you can go, what's safe, and but you get to visit these towns. You, you know, they have, we had bikes on board so we could bike into wow. town, and we had you know Michelin star uh, restaurant dinners uh, uh, dressed uh, on our, <laughs> from our, from our bikes, you know, and so here we came biking up in and sat down. And, had these great dinners in in France, so yeah, it's a wonderful experience. I recommend it to people, and you can take friends. So that's what's nice. You can take uh-huh. up to, some of them. You can take up to six people. Wow! So when you have help on board, it was Julie and I, uh-huh. where Julie was piloting a boat that takes up to six people. It was quite large, uh-huh. and uh, and the, just the two of us on board. It was uh, it was a feat. Uh, the the one we had had on the Lot River was smaller. It only set uh, four people on board, so even though there were two of us, it was more manageable. But uh, she was she was piloting this uh, huge boat down the river. I mean, it was great. How, how big? How long are they? Oh, good question. Uh, I, I, you know, let me. Say, I, I don't think I have any information right here with me. Football but, uh, field you know, very, about about a football field but, or. You know, or, you know, maybe around a football field or longer or shorter? No, no, no. My gosh. No, no. That's too, 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 too long. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me see. While, while we're talking here, I'll see if I can. I was uh, thinking like a barge. Up. I was thinking you running this barge down the river. And no, I was, no, no. <laughs> barge. They do have barge. You're right. You're right, though. There, That is another uh, experience that people can have. And it's been, it's been famous for years, in fact. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the barge experiences. Those were famous way back in the old days. You know, people would go on barges and maybe you just go for an afternoon or maybe you go for a few days. And it would, but that one, you know, would include a captain and and uh, you weren't really piloting your own. Uh, you weren't really piloting your own boat. You were. You had somebody who was uh, who was uh, who was doing it for you. So mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to. I'm looking at the the Canal Midi, which is quite beautiful and. Um, we decided that this year would have been a good year to have done the Canal Midi because, but during because of COVID, there wasn't as many people right. out doing the boating this year. It was like when we were on the lot, or where we were, um, you know, where we were uh, on, on, on the river on the different rivers. I mean, it was just it was a lot lot less people than normally. I think uh-huh. it would be uh, much more crowded in the summer when we were there if you were um, doing. Uh, if you were going in a regular year. But this year, people were, you know, staying at home, and so uh, you weren't able to experience, um, you, you, I mean, it was better. It was better because you didn't have so many people. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to find some information on the boat here. Yeah. But, uh, well, I, I wonder, if, did you ha- do you drop an anchor when you go off to this? Can you just pull along the side of a river? Do you you have could, to... In some places, you, they do allow you to do that, actually. In some places, they do allow you to uh, to just uh, not not anchor so much as tie off. They have uh-huh. tie offs, uh-huh. and so you can tie off your boat and uh, on the side of the canal. Uh-huh. It, and but there are particular places they don't let you do it. You know, everywhere they just uh, they. Um, I, I have no idea. Let me give people a number though: one eight hundred seven three four five four nine one, one eight hundred seven three four five four nine one. And if they go to LaBoat.com, they can uh, look at the different itineraries mm-hmm. and, uh, and also t- find out the, the boats. The boats are about 25 feet. You know, oh, they're not, okay. They're not very big. Okay, yeah. okay. They're, that's they're, that's no, manageable. I was, yeah. 
I was picturing Julie in a captain's hat with this barge of this river going down the, down the rivers in this yeah, barge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah, she had a captain's hat. Yeah, yeah she had a captain's good. hat. Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, she was, uh, you know, she was here. Oh, I'm, I think I maybe finally got found a spot where uh, where the boats are, and I can... I can, uh, did I you, did you, you a, have a any side. did you have any scary moments? Well, uh, you know, when you're in the locks and the boat the the, the canal we were on, the Sone River is big. It's for barges like you're talking uh-huh. about and uh places like that. So uh you know, so it's it's for it it you know, so you can get in these big locks with your little boat and uh and you can find out and you can it can be scary because uh, you know and and one of the techniques is that you uh you have your rope and you're and you're tying it onto the side of the lock and as the lock is filling or the lock is draining you're moving your rope so that you put it on the next hook going down mm. and uh, if you lose your your hold on to the side of the of the lock, you're floating out in the middle of the lock, and uh, you know, you, and, and with, if there are other boats there, it can get to be, uh, it can be, it can be a problem. So, uh, so um, that was that. We had a couple of scary moments there. I lost uh, control of the uh, of the of the rope, and uh, and it turned out that uh, you know, so so it, it looked like I, I was kind of panicked a bit, but it turned out all right. It was it was okay. So now, of course, this we have to imagine this amazing adventure in the middle of COVID still, and you had waited till you could go in. Um, of course, everything was still. Things are still. You don't know. So you were flying in. What did you fly? You flew from Los Angeles to where? We flew from Los Angeles. So we were going to the south of France, the southwest France. So we flew from Los Angeles to Paris and then from Paris down to Toulouse. And we started our trip out of Toulouse, and we went into um, into Anton uh, Noble Val, Saint Anton Noble Val, uh, for the first part of the trip, and then we went up to Puy-le-Vec and the Lot region for the second part of the trip. Then we visited friends in Angoulême or over near Bordeaux, uh, and spent some time with them. And then we went down to Saint Jean de Luz, which is right next to Biarritz. And met some friends there, and then we went into um, the Pyrenees to do some hiking and stuff, and oh, yeah. uh, and had a great great time there. And then ended up in Coyure on the French Riviera, and Cadiz in on the on on the on the Mediterranean in Spain. So oh. that was the complete oh. itinerary that we that, took. It's a fabulous itinerary. And and did you when you landed? Were you what were the protocols you had to do? After you got off the plane. Oh, when you land? Well, first of all, leaving here, you had to make a statement, uh, attest to the fact that you were free of COVID and hadn't seen anybody and all this kind of stuff. And you had to uh, have, have be vaccinated. We were vaccinated. And so we got a uh, – and then when we were in France, uh, uh, Julie went to a pharmacy and we got a pass, pass sanitaire – which was like a passport that we could use to go to restaurants and bars oh. and things like that. Is it is it online? And, uh, is it like a, is it an actual hard copy or is it like a QR code? Uh, so, well, we had a piece of paper, but uh-huh. you can get it. Uh, you know, you you can do it. You can do it online and then save it to your phone. And then it's that code. Uh-huh. You can use that code to show people if you went to a restaurant or uh-huh. something uh, who you are and what you're doing. Uh-huh. And and they'll let you in if and, you have and, the pass. And she there. got it by showing her vaccination card, and then they issued it to her. Yeah, she got, showed her va- and, Yeah, she showed her vaccination card and proved that she had had the vaccine, and mm-hmm. then they gave her the pass sanitaire for Good France. to know, good to and know. And then in Spain, they, they took that in Spain. Spain was a little looser, uh-huh. as you would expect, and, and so they certainly took the pass sanitaire from, from France. Uh-huh. But the French were very uh, specific. You had to have it. You wouldn't get into bars and restaurants uh-huh. and clubs, and uh, you wouldn't get into, uh, you know, uh, everywhere, anywhere. Uh-huh. Anywhere, anywhere you wanted to go, you needed that pass sanitaire. So we had that. Even shopping? That Did you it. have to show it to go shopping? Yeah, you, but to get to a mall, we had uh-huh. to show it before as we were approaching the mall. Yeah, go into a store. You uh-huh. need to show it. They wouldn't let you in. Oh, good. So the French were really very uh, uh, picky yeah. about what they were doing. And uh, and and so it was it was really great. It was great. I mean, it was, it was 
it was we felt very safe we felt like you know we were being taken care of yeah that the french uh, you know the the French had done a, a, a good job of protecting people. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, that was great. So, so that's just, you know, and uh, the situation changes every day. So yeah. people traveling to Europe or anywhere need to uh, make sure that they find out what are the, the requirements and the restrictions right now. So when you go there also, when you were walking around and you pulled the, the boat, the boat into a, a harbor and tied it up, then you wore masks when you're walking in the street, or no masks? No, oh, yeah. You wore yeah. masks. Mask you walking. know, if you were walking yeah. with, I mean, you were supposed to wear a mask if you're in certain areas, like if you're in a pedestrian area, uh-huh. you would wear a mask, and, and, and even outside. And But once you sat down, you could take the mask off, yeah. and uh, and then you show them the past sanitaire. And, uh, yeah, you'd have a mask on to wander around uh-huh. and to, uh, you know, to, you, 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 you basically needed a mask for everything. And uh, some people were very particular about it and others not as much. But if you're walking around and you were in the open, they really didn't bother you that much. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, we saw a concert that was outside, and there were two police officers there. Wow. Everybody walked through the concert, had to have their mask on, oh. and had to, had to pass sanitary to even come to the event. So the French were really protecting uh, themselves. They did a good job. And... Uh, now I understand the United States has opened up its restrictions for Europeans and other people coming into the United States. So we dropped the restrictions against them because that was kind of a sticking point. Yes, it was for the yeah. European Union. The yeah, European but you Union have to. They, they still have to be vaccinated and to have a negative test. Yes, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. right. Mm-hmm, so yeah. you know, like when we came back, we had to get a test. We got one in Spain, a negative test, so that we could get back into the United States. So mm-hmm. everybody needs to do that to come back to the United States. So, so you went to some places that were kind of off the beaten path, as you love to do. Were you seeing any other tourists, or were you pretty much feeling just it was like all French uh, Parisians there in the area where you were in France? Lots of tourists. Really? Lots of tourists. Really? Uh, yeah, lots of tourists. I mean, uh, uh, French tourists. Yeah. Not very many Americans. We didn't see uh, very many Americans. Uh-huh. Uh, so, um, so, uh, so we... Uh, you know, we we yeah, you know, there wasn't very many Americans. We maybe saw one couple, I think, in the whole trip, or wow. maybe two. Wow! And uh, but a lot of uh, Belgium, a lot of Europeans traveling, mm-hmm. and uh, and that was that was the majority of the trip was was that kind of thing. So when you got through at the boat part, um, did you rent a car to get to the other? Check a train to get I to the. No, we had a car the whole time. We rented oh. a car in Toulouse and oh. uh, rent and had it for us for the whole. 45 days that we were out and uh you know while we were obviously on the boat we the car the car sat in the parking lot back at the la boat uh uh headquarters or the port that that, that we got the boat in and uh and so we uh, we were um we 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 left the car there but but yeah we had a, a rental car the whole time we were there and and, and went and traveling all we traveled quite a bit so we, we had a lot of are, are the rent cars still um, i know of course prices here i've gone insane but rent cars in europe are always kind of pricey maybe not so much compared to america now but was it rather expensive to do a rent car for that long well i had booked the rent car uh months and months and months and uh earlier uh-huh. when uh, covid was in because you know six yeah. times we tried to get to france so we had reservations like months and months in advance and so for for the car reservation stayed through all those cancellations. Oh. I just kept the reservation, uh-huh. and uh, you know we kept changing the dates and that kind of thing. And so I, I was we were able to get a fairly decent price. But um, but yes, you're right. The the price of of auto uh, of rentals in Europe was were ridiculous, like four thousand dollars. What it would have been for the period of time? Yep, Whoa. four thousand dollars for the period of time that we had it. Uh. We were fortunate enough to get it much less than that, probably wow. because I, I booked it so far in advance. Yeah, but I don't know if it's getting better. You know, it has to do with the availability of the cars and everything yeah. else, and um, you know, it's it's just. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's you know still the best way to see Europe is to have a, a car and, and travel and, and it's more ex- stop where you want. Did you do stick shift? I mean, I know it's more expensive. Most yeah, it was stick shift. Yeah. It was a stick shift. That's right? usually cheaper. They, they have automatics and yeah, stuff too. Yeah, but automatics cost more. Had a, we, we had a stick shift. Oh, well, that's good. Huh? 
So automatics usually cost more. And there's some restrictions I know on Ireland. Uh, on some places, they won't let you rent a car if you're over 75, I think, 74 or 75. There's some restrictions. Right, right. That is a problem. Yeah. That is a problem. You're exactly right. That's a, a new Because of insurance. New limitation yeah, because for of me it. traveling. I just turned 75 yesterday. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, kind of, Happy birthday. Oh, my gosh. So I, there'll, I didn't there'll know. Be some, there would be some limitations for me. Me driving, so yeah, so I mean, and some not not every country and not every company, yeah. but some of them do, and or they charge you more, and so it's more expensive if you're older. That's for sure. So, uh, did you have a good birthday? Uh, yeah, I had a very nice birthday. Uh, my wife Julie took uh, me and a couple of friends out to uh, a place here in Topanga, the end of the seventh row. I love and, it. Know, very nice lunch. It's so good and, there. Uh, you know, some nice. Uh, Nice gifts and cards and that kind of thing. So, yes, I had a very nice birthday. Uh, the end of the seventh ray was there when I lived there back in the 60s. Sure. It's been there for 40-something years. So yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I, I, actually, I think it may have been the 70s. It was the 70s. But, I mean, no, it's historic. It's right set on the river there, and it's it's wonderful. It's quite amazing. And it's glad to, I'm glad to see it survived all this time. That That's nice. Yeah, it's fabulous. Yeah, and I heard fabulous that... Um, I heard that Will Gear's place has been doing their Shakespeare shows there also. Um, oh, yeah. They're the same thing. 45 years, something like that. The Theatricum Botanicum in Topanga yeah. continues to do. And, you know, they've been through COVID, so they haven't been able to do their seasons. But they're just about to start. They just, I think they're having, this is the first year where they're going to have a season of shows. And they have been, you know, been showing, having shows. So it's pretty, oh. pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like a fabulous trip that you did in your itinerary. And I saw some pictures of you in the Pyrenees. And I've always thought of the Pyrenees and the Dolomites kind of in the southern part of France. But if I read correctly, you weren't necessarily in those parts. You did an, the... Uh, well, the Pyrenees, we were in Spain. Yeah. And so, yes, the Pyrenees run across the boundary between Spain and France. And uh, we were in Spain, actually, when we did our hiking trips, and uh, it was was quite quite beautiful, uh, wonderful experiences. Well, you did a, quite a long trek. I think you did. I, I saw you did one that was impressive. Yeah, we did one trip. I think it was some ridiculous 11 miles or 8 miles or 10 miles. I can't remember exactly, but we were pretty tired at the end of it. And on top of that, it's pretty high altitude, which makes it harder on a walk. It was a little bit of an altitude, maybe 5,000 feet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we were surrounded by mountains. It was quite beautiful. And uh, it was great. It was a, a wonderful experience for us to be having. Well, you know, it, it. you know, you deserve this. This was a long one. Now, did you actually stay in any home? Uh, you said you visited friends, but did you actually rent a we home and basically stay? basically in- Airbnb. And, uh, you know, and we, so you are staying in people's homes. Uh, and uh, we'll be featuring some of them in our Travelscope magazine, uh, where people can get, like I said earlier, Travelscope.net. They can download that. And we'll be, we'll be talking about uh, the experiences that we had in, in Europe um, in, uh, in those in the upcoming issues of the magazine. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so people can just keep a watch on that, and they'll get some good tips on things to do, places to go, and, you know, we had some, like I say, we had some, we stayed at some Airbnbs, and, and we had some fabulous meals, and uh, took notes uh, for all those things, so people will be able to get that information uh, by going to, to the to the magazine, Travel Scope, and it won't, it'll be a, a couple of issues from now, probably, or one, the next one, anyway. Uh, this issue that's coming out now features Costa Rica. And the Costa Rica trip, you know, you know how it mm-hmm. is with publications, you're always a little bit uh, behind. And so, uh, yeah, so our April trip uh, to the volcano and to the, to the beaches and up into the mountains and the cloud forest, that's all in, uh, that's all in the, this issue of the Travel Scope magazine. And it should be coming out soon. We're in the final stages of uh, proofing and getting that to, together and... Uh, in fact, uh, as soon as I get off the phone with you, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll be proofing the, the final version of the uh, magazine so that it can, it can go out while we're uh, in Texas sh- shooting a show. And, and, and since it was not your typical shooting trip, where, I mean, which includes a crew and, and work and, and, and a lot of organization and permits, et cetera, a lot of times, 
Did you feel more like this was a vacation? It was your honeymoon? and Oh, and, yeah, sure. Very yeah. much like that. Very much. It was very much a vacation and a relief from being cooped up for, uh, well, at that time, over a year. And so, um, yeah, it was a relief from that. It was it was a great trip. It was, you know, it, uh, it was a fabulous trip. I'll always remember that Costa Rica trip for, for so many reasons. But I meant but, your French um, trip. It, I meant your French trip. Oh, that was no, yeah. That was uh, that was exactly how we thought of it. Yeah. And you know, we we had other uh, things we were doing, but we were always scouting, and you know, do working with, like I said, working with the Lebo people, uh, in the hopes and expectation that we'll actually be doing some shooting in France on some of their uh, canals and some of their rivers. So that that'll be um, up in the air, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, you know, like everything on Travel Scope, it just comes to pass. Yeah. As we uh, work hard to, you know, um, Julie is always uh, looking for opportunities and for destinations for us to be filming. And so um, she uh, she has been talking to the Lebeau people about uh, a couple of their trips. They're going to do okay. a, they're doing a new canal uh, experience in Canada. And so they oh. might we might be working with them to to highlight that trip and also. They're going to be doing, a, uh, there's always the, the return to the lot, which is one of our, um, you know, we, we, love, we love that lot experience. And that, that should be, um, that could be something that we'll be doing as well, highlighting it and actually shooting it. And it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, uh, it's what I, I would recommend that trip for people who want a first time uh, drive your own boat experience. I, I am so inspired by this this wonderful, wonderful trip you did. And, and it's just wonderful to hear. I, I, I'm so glad you had a good birthday and you were able to do this safely. Uh, um, there's a lot of things you have to navigate <laughs> besides a boat on a trip these days. There's so many things that you have to be flexible with. And I guess one of the key, would you say the key thing is patience? What would you recommend for people venturing out there for well, the first people time? people need to be informed. You need to do, do the background work and find out what the restrictions are and what you need, you know, certain kinds of insurance, uh, all of that. You need to have that to, uh, to, to, to meet requirements and to protect yourself. If you were to get sick and got stuck in Europe for two weeks in a quarantine, you need to have that. So you need to find out what, what the country you're going to, what the restrictions are, and, you know, you don't want to get yourself over there and find out you have to be quarantined in a hotel for two weeks. So, you know, you need to find out ahead of time exactly what those restrictions are so that when you travel at this crazy time, you are prepared for whatever comes your way. And like you said, travel insurance, and I guess to check to see whether there's refundable fees in case things do come up or you yeah. can't. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of that, a lot of seeing if you're going to get your, your money back if you have to cancel or if they cancel on you, what are the, what are the requirements. Things have tightened up considerably. They're pretty much back to, nor- back to normal as far as what the airlines is giving people. Uh, so don't expect any breaks from the airlines no, and, no. or from other hotels, rental cars, all the whole lot. Everybody's, uh, you know, feels that they're out of the COVID, uh, having to give you uh, a break or make it easy for you to cancel and all that stuff. They're just people. You just so when you when you get your hotels, you know, there are certain companies you can book from which uh, allow you to cancel at the last minute or. Uh, just before you leave in case something does happen. So just be very careful about your cancellation policies for for every for everything, for mm-hmm. anything you purchase for uh, for travel. Yeah, absolutely. Travelscope.net, um, and it's such a pleasure talking to you. I just love your adventures and your attitude about traveling. I think we should close the show here with you doing your wonderful quote, which you close your Travelscope shows with. Well, this is Joseph Rosendo reminding you of the words of Mark Twain. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. Uh, Happy traveling. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Bye. Bye.